colors this year are amazing. I'm sure if you thought on your nearly five kilometer drive, that you have seen some beautiful colors. And we have, we have enjoyed them. So um, praise God, he makes wonderful and he does all things well. We're gonna sing this song, Isn't He Wonderful, Wonderful? Okay, so you see that, let me get your W's out for wonderful. And we're gonna sing, Isn't He Wonderful, Wonderful, Wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord, Wonderful? Eyes have seen His effort, it's recording God's word. Isn't Jesus my Lord, Wonderful? Needed. Wow, that's a really good, simple phrase. I like that, John. That's good. Needed. 
Somebody said useful is when a jug is full and used. Is that what it is? No, probably not, although we do need jugs. So boys and girls, before we start, let's pray and then we'll get started. Lord, we love you and we lift up today to you. This is your day. We want to honor you. Thank you for all the mommies and daddies and boys and girls who have chosen today to be their day of worshiping you. Be honored, be glorified, and be lifted up today, Lord, and, and help us to be useful on purpose for you. Amen. Boys and girls, I have sent on ahead today your, your questions ahead of time so you can listen in and even be writing them down beforehand and then send them in digitally to Mrs. Hill and I will record them for points starting up again this week. Okay, boys and girls, the word is useful. Let me just ask you a few questions. We're going to have a game here. This is a... Screwdriver. Uh -uh. <laughs> okay, what is it? A power drill. A power drill. And a power drill is used for... Knocking down walls. Knocking down walls. Uh-oh. We do not have a very... Screwing in screws. Screwing in screws or out screws. Yes, drilling in holes, right? Okay. This is a... Hammer. Brush. It's a... Paintbrush. Paint brush. Oh, he said hammer instead of people. And a paintbrush is used for... Painting Hannah's bedroom. She said, I want to paint my bedroom. Okay. This is a... Spit up and... Fork. And they are used for what? Eating. They're used for eating. That's all these little jokesters in here. Typical boys. This is a ball. A ball. And it's used for playing hobby. football. Hobby. Hobby. It's used for your new puppy to play with a ball. Yes, and her football. Exactly. Football, or Mrs. Hill would say basketball. So, boys and girls, we can see that the right tools have their purpose for the right thing. Like you wouldn't use a piano to drill, a, you wouldn't drill a piano, or do it, you wouldn't drill a hole with a piano. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't take a fork and try to paint with it. Well, you could do <coughs> a little bit of painting, but it'd be funny, wouldn't it? So boys and girls, the right tools are useful. And that's God made everything for a purpose, boys and girls. And we are going to learn that we were made for a purpose, and a very specific purpose. I also have something here. What does this say right here? What does this, what, what does that say, John? Help wanted. Help wanted. Boys and girls, you can see that sign, help wanted. When would we usually see a sign like this? Where would we see a sign like this? Where do you boys and girls think you'd see it? Yes? Dublin City. Oh, Dublin City. Okay. Because Where in Dublin City? Uh, on a shop. On a shop. Yes. And what would they have a help wanted sign in Dublin City at a shop for? Yes? Because they lost a phone or something? If they lost a phone. Well, we were doing really good, and then I think we got a little distracted at the end. Not, not that, yes? Um, so they can hire us? They can hire people. Help wanted. They want. This is used for a sign to help. They have a purpose for it, and that purpose is to hire people. And so, boys and girls, we're going to talk about a man that God had a purpose for but he didn't realize it, and when God told him, he didn't really want it until God spoke to him specifically. He was, it's not that he didn't want it, he didn't feel he was useful for it. Turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 4. I hope you have your Bibles in Sunday school class. Always bring your Bibles. Exodus chapter 4. And we are going to go to verse 10 and 11, 12 and 13. And the Bible says in Exodus chapter 4, Verse 10, and Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my God, I am not eloquent, neither hereto, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who make the dumb, or the deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth. We're speaking about the mouth. And, it, and what we should say, and teach thee, the Bible says, what thou shalt say. And he, Moses, said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him who thou wilt send. Someone else, Lord, I just can't do it. So many times we offer excuses, and Moses was offering excuses to the God of heaven who said, I'll teach you what to do. 
So many times God says, I'll teach you how to live this life that I have for you on purpose. And so many people say, no, God, that's not, that's not, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do, no, Lord, find somebody else. There's got to be somebody else who will do this job for you, God, because I can't do it. But God was telling his servant, I can help you. Let me teach you. Well, Moses still denied it, still doubted it. God got upset and God said, fine, I will get your younger brother. And so he did. He went and got Aaron, his younger brother, and he said, Aaron is going to speak and you will lead. And do you know what the Bible says in the court? They were a dynamic duo together. Together as a team, they did more for God than they probably would have done individually on their own. And so as a team, they worked together. And Aaron was the spokesman for Moses. God spoke to Moses. Moses told to Aaron. Aaron told it to the people. But as you read in the Bible, when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments, if you remember that, <clears throat> was Aaron a strong leader and held to the things that were right? Or did he crumble under pressure and built a calf? Right? He crumbled under pressure. God purposely made Moses a strong leader. And Aaron was the voice and the high priest of, it, of Moses and God. But, but God had gifted Moses with authority and resilience in, in leadership. And so boys and girls, God is also looking for his children. His children to be <coughs> useful, on purpose servants for the Lord. So let's talk about that, boys and girls, because he wants you to know that you were created for a useful purpose for him, boys and girls. And, and you need to realize how has God made me? The first thing of all that I want you to look at is what are you good at? What has God showed you something that you really enjoy, that you're good at? I'm going to pick on, on, on Manuel here because he's our new technician. We have just discovered a new talent and gift in our church as we have a guy who thinks very technically. We, we, had, we already knew about one guy in the church that did, but we have a rising, budding up technician here in our church, Emmanuel, who's been taking care of all the camera work for us and doesn't want me to talk about him right now, so I'm going to stop, but I just have to say that God has given him an understanding and a useful purpose, and he is using it specifically to glorify God right now and, and be a servant for the Lord in the church. Praise God for that. Amen. Praise God for that. No, boys and girls, you need to find out what you're good at. Maybe you're good at playing music. Use that in the church for the Lord. Maybe you're good at fixing things. I hope you're here saying, how can I fix what jobs need to be done around the church? You know, so many people take their little useful gifts and say, Mike, it's my gift. It's mine. You can't have it. And God is saying, but I want to use it. And Moses said, no, you can't have this, Mom. It's not good. It's not good. I can't use it. And God is saying, well, let me use it. I'll teach it. Well, boys and girls, um, I can think of some Sunday school friends. Now, I want you to listen up. If your name is being called, I want your ears to go beep, okay? I can think of some Sunday school friends that have some special gifts from the Lord. I think of Rachel. Rachel is always willing to talk with you, to have a cheerful smile, and to be friendly. I love that about Rachel. God has gifted her with an ability to carry on conversations. Since she was a baby, that girl could talk, I mean, really, really well. Andrew. Andrew is friendly. He tries hard and he loves to participate in games. He is very willing and oh, very helpful. I think of Lewis. Lewis is gentle. He's very welcoming with his smile. He's playful and willing to help whenever asked to. I think of John. John loves to play games and get involved. He loves to talk with others as well and has ideas and loves to fix things whenever I have a job. I fix that. I love that. And John also incorporates that into the church as well. Dexter. Dexter really makes a good um, communication. Dexter um, makes good comments. Dexter has intelligent comments. He's always thrown out there for us to think on. We're like, yeah. And he can say one word, and the rest of the whole group is like, mm, that's true. Or one thing, and we're all laughing. And Dexter sits there watching us. We love that Dexter is funny. And he has dry wit, and everyone loves to hear um, him work on his, his music. Dexter is gifted in music. And Daniela, I think of how fun she is, and she loves to laugh, and she's gentle-spirited, and Daniela cares very carefully for her little brother, Sam. Now listen, there's more. I didn't name all of them. I just wrote down a few in my devotion time one day. And because God has given you a gift, he has a job in mind for you to do it. Gifts are not meant to be hoarded and hid. It's like the man who hid his mummy under his mattress and never used it. That's not what God intended. 
God intends to bless you when you use the gift and talents you have. The second thing I want you to think about, not just think about what you're good at, is to find a purpose for your skill. Focus on one or two skills. Boys and girls, if you focus on the this, 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 you'll miss out on developing the skills God wants you to. Think of one or two skills that you are good at and develop those skills. Find out how you can use them. If you like to take care of children, then find a family who has a young little child and help them carry stuff in their, to their car after church. Um, take the children aside and play games with them when the mommy and daddies are talking. If you're good with children, read them stories. If you're good with children, participate in crush and read and play with the children. Develop their knowledge about Jesus. Boys and girls, find as many. If you're good in music, take that. Use it in the church. Even if you're just saying, well, I'm not sure if I'm good. Develop your skills in music. Become useful. Find as many ways as you can help to do it. You know, boys and girls, I find that people don't do a thousand things in the church. It's just they find one or two good things they're good at, like teaching. We love Mrs. Thompson and Auntie D and Miss Christelle as teachers. And, and we've got other teachers as well that have come in and been useful. And when they do, they teach. And when they teach, the kids light up and they look forward to it every week. We can't wait to get back to after COVID fantastic real life again. And boys and girls, if you're good at organizing, find out how people organize and do better and learn how to do that skill. If you're good, go around the church and say, can I do this? Can I do this? Volunteer for Jesus. Be a volunteer for Jesus. Lastly, be willing to learn, boys and girls. First, think of all the things you're good at. Second, purpose. Find a purpose for those skills with the Lord. Third, be willing to learn. Be teachable. Boys and girls, don't compare yourself to somebody else who's doing something and think, oh, I'm going to do that. I need to be good at that. Don't compare if somebody else has the same gift as you, like they're good at music as well. Think, okay, praise the Lord. There's many talents that can be, many hands make what? Light work, we say in Ireland, don't we? And so boys and girls, be teachable. Be willing to learn and develop and use those skills to help others and to bless the Lord and he will be honored. Listen up, we've got a missionary story that Joshua's gonna share with us, a new story about a new man. Listen up, because it's in your questions. Listen for his name. Hello again, boys and girls, and I'm back to tell you about our new protagonist, and I'm sure you've learned that word by now, and his name is Jacob Bauer. Now, I'll give you 500 points if you heard of this guy. Never mind. Um, don't take me up on that, okay? That's a joke, okay? Right? Um, no, all right? So, Jacob Bauer grew up in a Christian home. And, you know, it, it can be easy for a child to learn how to live righteously, but not ever develop a living and personal relationship with the Lord. This was exactly what happened to Jacob Bauer. Day after day, he heard the truth. His father read the word of God at the breakfast table, and his mother taught him the ways of a good Christian boy. But to Jacob, it was superficial, empty. It never became real to him, and no one knew this except Jacob. On the outside, he really walked the walk. When the young boy turned 18 years old, he sat down to talk with his father about leaving home and becoming employed. Jacob found his father seated in the parlor with an open Bible on his lap. This was a familiar sight to young Jacob. He had grown to have a deep respect for the dedication of his father, and after watching him read through um, the Bible um, year after year, his respect developed even more. His father had attempted to instill the truths of God's word into his son Jacob, and, had seemed, um, and it had seemed that he had done so. But deep down in the inside, Jacob Bauer longed for the day that he could leave home and live as he chose to live. And that does not sound a whole lot like the prodigal son, but we learn from the Bible that he wasn't happy. And in the end, he turned and did the right thing and returned to his father and repented. I wonder if Jacob Bauer's going to do that. Well, let's read on. He kept this worldly desire to himself, knowing that it would break his parents' heart if they knew his father looked up and saw him. Jacob, come here, my son. We need to talk. The teenage boy's heart lurched slightly in his chest. Had his father heard his thoughts? Did he somehow know of his longing for worldly pleasures? Timidly, he approached his dad, and attempting to divert the conversation in a direction he desired, said, Father, you'll never guess who I saw in town this afternoon. 
Who was it, Jacob? His father asked. I saw old Cletus Snodgrass. Ooh, that's an interesting name. And he actually had a shovel in his hand and he appeared to be working. I couldn't believe it. Everybody knows he's the laziest man in town. Jacob was digging deep, trying to investigate meaningless conversation with his father in hopes that it would distract him from spiritual topics. Now, Jacob, you know the word of God says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You know that you should not talk about other people in that unkind way, son. Jacob knew it was futile. He would have to endure another one of his dad's lectures about holy living. He answered, I'm sorry, Father. I knew better than to speak of Cletus in that way. I would not appreciate someone speaking about me in that manner, so I must not speak of others in that way. You're exactly right, Jacob, his dad said. You must always do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Jacob's father talked on and on until finally the conversation shifted to the subject of Jacob's leaving home. It was hard to believe, but it was time for Jacob to venture out on his own. Jacob had already been hired by a Mississippi River Barge Company and would begin his labors the following Monday. Jacob's mother packed his few meager belongings into a carpet bag, an old suitcase type thing, only it was like a bag, taking great pains in folding each of his shirts and tucked a Bible in between the folds of his clothing. She prayed he would read it and live by it. The day young Jacob Bauer left his home to begin life on his own, he walked away from his godly upbringing. He would break his mother and father's hearts, but right now, he didn't care. He wanted to live life to the fullest, or so he thought. This was a decision he would soon terribly regret. Well, not a very happy note to end on, but you know, sometimes we need to think. And this story is one of those, I hope, that will get you to think and as we travel along with Jacob Bauer on his journey, let's learn about uh, making godly decisions and keeping in line with what we learn in church and what our parents teach us, because you will, um, otherwise you will later regretfully realize that they were very important. Okay, boys and girls, again, it's been wonderful to be together and to share God's word. So um, we just hope you have a fantastic Sunday. Can't we just see something?